Over the past few episodes, I showed you how to read signals from an RC controller, and we talked to Jamie Lieben about getting some design tips for creating a plastic combat bot. Now, we're going to combine all of that knowledge and make our very own wedge bot. To start, we'll download a copy of Jamie's wedge design from Thingiverse. We'll rotate the chassis and lid to print flat, and we'll print with a brim to avoid lifting on the bottom. If you're savvy with 3D modeling software, feel free to add some weight or cut a notch in the wedge for a weapon. But for me, I'm just going to print the chassis as is. Now that the 3D print is done, there's three things we need to do before we can start building our electronics. The first is we just need to peel off this brim as it kind of gets in the way of our wheels. Well, after peeling off the brim, the edges look a little rough, so you can use some sandpaper or a file to take those down. The second is that you'll notice that our motors don't quite fit thanks to these posts in the back being in the way, nothing a Dremel can't fix. And the third is we should take a drill and bore out some of these holes to allow our screws to fit a little more easily. And we also want to add a hole to one of the sides so that we can add a small LED. Um, and this is because the rules state that a visible LED must be on the outside of the robot so that operators and referees can tell if it's on and potentially dangerous. Now that the chassis is done, let's add some electronics. I'll use the same circuitry that I showed previously to drive a cardboard box around. We just need to solder everything together as this is a lot stronger than leaving everything on a breadboard. Remember, this has to survive combat after all. To start, I lay everything out in the chassis to get an idea of how everything should fit together. Take your time with this, as you'll want to make sure you can close the lid. We'll need several of the boards to attach to 5 volts, ground, and raw battery voltage at the same time, so we'll need to wire up some buses, and the best way I found to do that was to wire them up on a proto board that's been broken apart into an 8x7 grid. We'll take that and then attach it on top of the receiver, and the best way I found to do that to make sure everything fits is take the receiver out of the case. Next, I make a list of connections that I need to make on a sticky note that I can reference while soldering. In case you couldn't read my handwriting, I've made a much nicer diagram of the wiring here. Each of these connections will need to be soldered together using wires. I've also added a diagram of the snappable proto board that shows the power buses. For example, the Arduino, motor driver, and receiver all need to be connected to VCC. Similarly, the battery, Arduino, motor driver, and receiver need to be connected to the ground bus. Time to solder! It's also a good way to prevent the proto board from flexing and shorting anything on the receiver. We don't want anything to accidentally short together, especially our battery's power and ground wires unless you want a lipo fire. So we'll coat everything in a nice layer of hot glue. I recommend using stranded wire for everything as it allows for flex in the cabling without snapping the wire's core. Don't forget to tin your stripped ends. Also, it helps to add one wire at a time and constantly make sure everything fits in your chassis. Measure twice and solder once. And that's it, we're done with the wiring. This process took me a few hours, so be prepared to settle down for a while. You can see the proto board on top of the receiver here and that I created loops of wire to make my power buses. I also added heat shrink tubing to my Dean's connector and motor tabs to keep everything together and prevent shorting. Here, I've added a green LED and 1K resistor attached to VCC and ground. I'll poke it through the hole I drilled on the side to show if the bot has power. To program your bot, I recommend using a 5 volt FTDI basic board. Plug in a straight header, and then push that through the holes in your Pro Mini. Hold it in place while it programs, and then pull it out when you're done. It's always a good idea to test your circuitry before affixing it to the chassis. So I've plugged in a battery and I'll turn on my transmitter. Move the thumbstick around to make sure the motors respond the way you want. With that, it's time to put everything in the chassis. I'll use servo tape, but you can use anything you want. I just cut pieces of tape that fit in between pins on each board and then stick the board to the plastic chassis. I then use M1.6 by 6 mm screws to attach the motors. The wheels should just slide over the motor shafts and stay put. I add a dab of hot glue into the side hole and slide the LED through. Wait a few minutes to let it cool. Connect the battery and carefully put it inside the chassis. Note that we don't tape down the battery as we'll want to replace it between matches. Finally, we button everything up with some number two by half inch screws. 
You can use M2.2 screws if you want to keep everything metric. Remember to skip the back corner holes since we sanded those down. Just remember that you'll need to pull the battery out to turn it off since we didn't add a switch. And that's it, you're ready to roll. Drive it around and have fun. But why stop there? Why build one when you can have two at twice the price? Wanna take a ride? <laughs>